Last week, the now infamous book The Women's Division Better Sign shined a harsh light on some fans' disapproval of a Tony Khan's handling of the AW Women's Division. This week at least felt like a renewed focus of sorts, although I cannot stress enough that one week does not fix everything. It takes months of sustained focus and improvement to build the division up. But this week across AEW's women's division was certainly worthy of being labeled the turning point should things be followed through upon. To add to Tony's challenge, it was reported by Fightful that Jamie Hayter would not be back in time for All In at Wembley Stadium. In fact, even a return before 2024 looks doubtful. Being able to bring back a talent like Jamie Hayter is a cheat code. It makes everything instantly feel bigger and better. With that now being out of Tony's toolbox, I thought he made a great pivot. There has been a long-standing sentiment among AW fans that Hikaru Shida's over year-long reign with the world title was somewhat bittersweet as she did the bulk of it in front of no fans. I think we all had penciled in Jamie Hayter regaining her belt from Tony Storm at Wembley. When that was no longer a possibility, I felt like the hard shift into the, this pandemic champion narrative right in time for the 200th episode of Dynamite felt to me like it was a good possibility of Sheeta winning. But whether it was fans feeling burned by this division or maybe just feeling wrong-footed or wrong-footing themselves <laughs> into feeling wrong-footed, I don't know what it was, but I don't feel like I heard any of the podcasts or anyone suspecting that Sheeta was going to win. This moment felt big. It was purely unintentional, but Sheeta celebrating her win with half her face spray painted with green reminded me of China with half her face covered in flour after winning the WWF Intercontinental Championship. For me, the vibes in both those situations were similar. As much as I love Tony Storm, who I'll get to later, Hakiro Shida is enshrined into AW lore as a Ricky Steamboat type figure, a perpetual, unassuming, and honorable babyface. The final minutes of this match were true heart in your throat stuff, where it truly felt like Shida had been bested by dirty tactics, but she kicked out. And before the luxuriating in that moment could subside, Shida reverses a pin attempt locks in a deep stack and pins Tony Storm for the win. There's confetti, there's crying, all laid over with Mikey Ruckus's awesome new walkout music for Sheeta. Commentary reminds us that this will now place Sheeta in front of 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium. The vibes were immaculate. From there we went to Ring of Honor where Athena is single-handedly carrying that brand. Uh, <laughs> She had a great match against Diamante that Thursday night, but that's just another day at the office for Athena. She's been doing that night in and night out. Uh, she might be the absolute best at this. But what really struck a chord with me was the post-match. Because of the disciplined approach they've taken with Athena's character, it was essentially a huge rub when she decided not to attack Diamante after the match and it was a kind of like a real recognizes real type moment and then what got me really excited was the post-match interview Athena having already shown so much respect for Diamante kind of gives her another rub and saying you know I, I know you have more I need to show it and Diamante as we see on collision was up for that challenge. I thought this was an awesome way to really give a big shot in the arm to Diamante's character. And I think her being paired with Mercedes Martinez is just such a great fit and I love this development. What I think will go underrated this week is the Anna J versus Sky Blue match on Rampage. It was, it was seven minutes of snappy, snug action that utilized their over character traits, but it didn't really have a storyline built into it. So it kind of had an uphill climb from a heat perspective. And this is something, this is actually uh, 
a good version of what I've kind of complained about with Rampage, where all too often you have someone who's in a storyline and being pushed versus someone who isn't. And this was a lot more unpredictable because this seemed to set the tone for what was going to happen as Anna Jay, being the winner, gets a title match against Hakira Shida. So while I think a pro wrestling company should have matches for the sake of being matches because this is supposed to come off as a sport and matches are fixtures of the sport. This one was a bit cold. They could have done something maybe in the interim to heat up a little bit. But the in-ring was very good. Both these women got time. And while I don't think anyone is thinking that Anna Jay will actually beat Hakiro Shida so quickly, uh, you know, this match is a way of setting up that match. Instead of just having Hikiro Shida versus Anna Jay for no reason. At least there's a reason to set up that match. Then on Collision, we got what I think was an awesome match between Chris Statlander and Mercedes Martinez. Sometimes in women's wrestling, I feel like there can be an overabundance of spots that are holdovers from the WWE Divas era with, you know, kind of soft kicks and a lot of participatory looking leg scissors stuff this was exactly not that this was a smash mouth powerhouse strong style fight even something as simple as chris statlander going face first into a turnbuckle after mercedes dodged her running attack felt credible and i feel like i keep saying this with each match but this was Chris Statlander's best match since she's been back. Whether it was a bit of rust or whatever the case, Statlander improves every match. This match in particular, I felt like Statlander really exhibited her flexibility, getting visibly folded in half a few times, which was highlighted by her bump off Mercedes uh, spider suplex. And also in her winning pinning maneuver, she used that flexibility. It's probably something of a hot take, but I would say that this was the best women's match of the week. And then lastly, I'll just touch on Hurricane Tony. This was an absolute beauty of a performance by Tony Storm. She channeled her inner actress from the golden era of film, having a mental breakdown. She was perfectly overdramatic and threatening and unhinged with Tony Schiavone. I dare say Tony Storm felt more than just one third of the outcasts and more like her own entity entirely. I'm really excited to see what direction this heads in. So, like I said, one really good week of booking does not a division make, but this was a really strong week for the women and I'm cautiously optimistic that this was the turning point we'll see going forward. You can let me know in the comment section what you think of my thoughts. You can also look me up on Twitter at AW underscore O-N-E. Thanks for watching, and as always, make sure the women in your life know how much you appreciate them.